Hello out there. Welcome to Wake Up to the Bible. I'm Daniel Kaplan. I'm here with my father, Dr. Mark Kaplan. And together, we are going through the books of the law in a yearly cycle. We're going to be doing a daily reading taken from the traditional portion Torah readings. And we're going to be going from Genesis to Deuteronomy. So if you follow along with us, you'll get through all those books. Um, today, we are going to be reading from Genesis 7, Genesis 7, uh, 1 through 16. And I will be reading from the Robert Alter translation. And the Lord said to Noah, come into the ark, you and your all your household, for it is you I have seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean animal, take you seven pairs, each with its mate, and of every animal that is not clean, one pair, each with its mate. Of the fowl of the heavens, as well as seven pairs, male and female, to keep seed alive over all the earth. For in seven days' time... I will make it rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights, and I will wipe out from the face of the earth all existing things that I have made. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood came, water over the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives came into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Of the clean animals and of the animals that were not clean, and of the fowl and all of that crawls upon the ground, two each came to Noah into the ark, male and female, as God had commanded Noah. And it happened after seven days, and the uh, sorry, it happened after seven days that the waters of the flood were over the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of that month, on that day. All the wellsprings of the great deep burst, and the casements of the heavens were opened. All right, so we have the escalation. <laughs> um, this would be, uh, in the uh, literary terms, the transition to Act Two, for those of you who like story theory. Um, the, one of the things is, uh, we mentioned it uh, yesterday in yesterday's podcast, but now we have the clarification that you're going to need more clean animals than unclean animals, uh, to per and it says to perpetuate the species. So obviously the idea is you're going to be killing more of certain kind of animals than others uh, for sacrifices, for consumption. Uh, one of the first things that I noticed uh, is the seven days time. This is so this was seven days before it happened. And I know there's different speculation as to why there's that seven days. I'm curious what uh, you why you think it specifically is calling that out. When, when you study their chronology, Methuselah, who had the longest lifespan, died the year of the flood. Did he die in the flood? Well, the Jews believed that he was he was righteous and that he died. And these seven days were a mourning period for Methuselah. There's a traditional seven-day mourning period called Shiva in the Jewish tradition. So in their minds, it goes all the way back to uh, the death of Methuselah. So that's just one. But it is interesting that several times in this account of Noah, you have seven-day periods mentioned. Mm -hmm. And so it does go back to the concept of of the Sabbath that you found early in the book of Genesis. Yeah, certainly you have seven as the number of like divine order, the number of that calls back to God being the, uh, the progenitor of everything. Right. You know, so, so that makes sense. Uh, 600, you, you know, I know people make a sixth into the number of man. So six times a hundred, that's kind of interesting. The Bible has uh, has a cycle of jubilees. Noah lived uh, 12 jubilees mm. before the flood, and then uh, he lived um, seven jubilees after the flood for a total of 19 jubilees altogether. Uh, those numbers are significant in the Bible, the jubilee and also the, the 12 and 7 and 19. They're all significant uh, numbers. I would like to say that when you read the, the Pentateuch, it is very much a basis for much of what you read in the New Testament and you read the writings of Peter and he shows how the flood is a type of baptism. And that's something to keep in mind. It is something to keep in mind. And from what I understand, I haven't done a deep dive in this subject, but one of the major differences between the Noah account of the flood and similar flood myths, um, you know, other stories that probably developed from the fact that the flood actually didn't did happen, but uh, other cultures that have flood stories, um, one of the big differences is that 
Noah's personal character is called upon as the reason for the saving of himself, whereas in other stories, I'm under the impression it comes across more like personal ingenuity or something like that. There is not the same use of that action to call into uh, a point about personal character or something like that. Um, <clears throat> One other thing that I uh, noticed uh, is obviously at the end, uh, we start to have, well, we have a few things that we haven't had, but one thing is that we don't, this is the first time we have really a reference to the calendar in terms of specifics. So we have had years, obviously up to this point, we know that they're counting years, right? But now we have months and we have specific days of the month. So we know that by the time we got to the flood, there was at least a calendar or there was at least a tradition over when this happened in retrospect if it didn't exist then but i would think it did exist then since you have the stars on the fourth day it would seem that because in exodus 12 god in effect reorders the months uh that we're dealing here with the seventh month mm -hmm. as being month number one in those days so the second month would actually be we would say the eighth uh, so I, I think most scholars would say that this this is the month we, we now call Heshvan, uh, the second month when the flood uh, flood begins. And also there's a poetic description of, of, of how it happens. And I don't think we should read it so literally that we kind of turn it into mythology. It's a, it's a poetic way of talking about, you know, what, what God did. Uh, there's one other uh, thing I wanted to say. If you study the, the uh, uh, account of Noah, it seems that he had his captain's log. Some of you may, uh, as, I, as I'm giving this talk, we've just had a 90-year-old uh, Canadian Jewish fellow go up into space and come down, uh, you know, um, William Shatner. Uh, but he always used to have a captain's log. Well, Noah evidently had a captain's log, and he had a year of 12 months, 30 days in a month, 360 days in a year. And that becomes a, a, a model for prophetic uh, statements that are made in the Bible. A prophetic year is, is a year of uh, 12 months or 360 days. And you can actually see it in the Noah account. So you're saying that Noah's uh, pathetic year being on the ark becomes a prophetic year. <laughs> Probably it was pretty rough being on an ark for that period of time, let me tell you. I do love I do love cruising, but obviously it wasn't that sort of situation. It feels uh, one thing about this story that I love so much from a literary standpoint is it is such a powerful metaphor for our need to really ground ourselves because there are times when the culture is just so destructive that essentially you do have to just isolate, knuckle down, insulate your family because. Uh, otherwise, you will get swept away in whatever is going on. So it is, it's not only, you know, uh, his, I do believe it's history, but it's also a beautiful uh, just metaphor about preparedness in a, a mixed up world. All right. So did you have any other thoughts about this uh, passage there? It looks like he's researching Maybe. Something. Maybe oh yeah later on we, how far did we read this time? <laughs> we read to uh, uh, verse eleven. Okay, then there's something beyond it I want to comment on later. All right, well that's a little stinger for the next one. So if you haven't already, <laughs> you need to subscribe, hit the bell, and uh, like and comment. You know, try to help us get some traction going. We'd love to have a lot of people involved. This could be a whole group thing. And if you want to get involved too, you can always uh, leave comments. You can ask us questions. You can read ahead. You know where we're going, right? Uh, <laughs> you can read ahead and you can ask us comments about things you always wanted to know about. And uh, yeah, we'll see you there. So see you tomorrow.